Okay, we're back. Welcome to part two of making the Behringer X-Touch work inside Sonar and for making all the buttons work inside Sonar. So first thing we're going to do, you notice I'm on my regular screen set. I'm going to go ahead and change that to a track view and I'm going to do that by pressing F2. Remember from the last video how F2 is assigned to track view. So I'll press that. I'm in track view. Um, and the next thing I'm going to want to do is while I'm in track view I want to say I want to fit all of the tracks um, into one view so I'm going to raise this up a little bit so you can see it there's a button up here that's labeled fit tracks if I press that button that fits all the tracks into one screen if I press fit project it'll actually squeeze it in from uh, that direction as well so all of the clips will fit in so I'm going to go ahead and press that so there's the whole project uh, so those two buttons uh, because of the overlay that we're using and what we've done they're working well again so if I want to navigate now from track to track I can do that by going down here to my navigation pad and right now you can see the uh, track 5 is the one that's has focus put on it. It's not selected, but it has focus put on it. So if I go down with my down arrow, I'm going to move down the track count. And it resets back at the top, you see, as I'm moving, it's moving through. And I can do that with the up arrow as well. So I can move back and forth from track to track. All right, so now we're going to go back in and we're going to look at selection again. And we're going to look at what using the modified buttons do when we're selecting. So if you notice, if I'm going, and let me come down here where you can see it, I'm back on my arrows again, and I push the arrow down. Again, it goes to the next track down, next track up, next track down, next track up, right? So what happens if I want to select a track, right? So I just basically scroll down to the track that I want to select. And now let me move back up here where you can see this. I've got the track in focus that I want to select. Now all I have to do is hold down the M1 button, which is the modified button, and that's this guy right here, and press the select button. So I'm going to hold down M1, I'm going to press select, and as you notice, it selected track 5 because that's the one I had highlighted. Alright, so what if I want to uh, select no tracks or deselect that track? That's modified button number four. So if I hold down M4 and press select, it'll deselect that track. All right, so what if I want to select all of the tracks? That's what M3 does. So if I hold down M3 and press select, it selects all of the tracks. Again, I'll hold down M4 and select and take them back off. So that's where the modify buttons come into play. All right, so now let's say I want to zoom and I want to I want to zoom out or zoom in a part since I've fit all these uh, tracks into the and fit the project in. So let's go down here to the zoom or to the cursor keys here. You see the one in the middle. So if I press the one in the middle, it lights up and that sets it to zoom. Now watch what happens when I press the up arrow. Let me get over on the screen. So that zooms it out and compresses a down arrow, makes them bigger. All right, so I can zoom in and out from there on the track view. If I want to zoom horizontally and vertically, I can do both. I can zoom out that way to really isolate a part. And to get back, I can go. Or say I'm zoomed all the way out here. Again, I can go back to fit project and it pulls it all back in to where it was at. So how do I zoom one track? Um, and there might be a better way to do this. Um, this is how I found to do it. If you guys can come up with a better way, please tell me. Um, 
as this is a little bit tedious it's not too bad but let me zoom back up here where you can see what I have to do to zoom a track right so first thing you want to um, press down M2 and hold it and press the fit tracks button and then that comes up with you see the screen with the track manager right so the M1 modify one button actually changes your function buttons to what's listed below them so I know that I want to first go up and down and select um, where I'm at in the dialog and we'll take zoom off to do that so now I'm going up and down in the dialog so say track one is highlighted okay so if I hold down the M, uh, M1 button because I know that changes my, uh, my function keys to what they're listed as below I know that spacebar selects or deselects the track so I'm going to hold down M1 and hit spacebar and check marks gone I'm going to hold down M1, press spacebar, check marks gone. I'm going to go through and, and do all these and leave just the ended controls track. Let's see, all of those are done, right? So you notice there's a button up here also that says Dialog OK. So if I click Dialog OK, whatever's highlighted, and let me move my cursor so you can see. So you can see the OK button here is what's highlighted, right? So if I hit Dialog OK, it's going to just click that button pretty much. So we'll do that. And now it's hidden all the tracks. Now I just have the Addictive Drums track there. Now if I go back in and I... Let me go down so we can see. If I go back and turn Zoom on, right? Now look. It's just the addictive drums track I'm zooming in and out of. So there may be a better way to do that. I'm not quite sure, um, but you get the point. So I'll take the zoom off of that. So I want all the tracks back, right? So M4 and Fit Tracks brings them all back right so now we have them all again m4 and fit project or m m2 i'm sorry and fit project all right m2 fit tracks okay there we go oh i just do fit project i'm sorry so if you just hit fit project it brings it all back the M4 brings the hidden tracks back up. So, again, that's M4 and Fit Project. If you do both of those together, whatever tracks you have hidden, they'll come back up. Again, if you want to go back into the track selection, you M2 and Fit Tracks, that dialog box comes up. You select or deselect what you want, and then the same thing. M4 and Fit Tracks brings them all back. It virtually puts a check mark and all those boxes and everything is back. Okay? So that's that. Alright, so now we're going to add markers and we're going to add some loops as well. So what you're going to want to do first is move the now time to where you want the first marker added. Um, so I'm going to do it at the start of where the Addictive Drums track comes in. So how you add a marker is you hold down the M1 key and you press marker and you see the marker dialog box comes up. So now you can actually name these markers uh, within the software. Um, so let me show you how we do that. Um, you have to turn the function keys here into numeric entry mode. So what you do to do that is um, you hold down the M1 key and you press the edit button at the same time. So I'm going to hold down M1. Uh, let me move this up where you can see the edit button actually. So I'm going to do M1 and edit. Holding down M1, pressing edit. 
So you notice when you do that, the edit button blinks. So what's that, what that's done is that's turned all of my function keys, the F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, into numeric entry keys. So um, let's enter what we want the first one to be. I'm going to call it 1. So see, it entered it up there as 1. Again, I can press dialog OK. And that will save that, and you see my marker number one is in. So now I'll move, and I'm going to do my second marker here where that break is right there. So I'll do the same thing. I'll do the M1 and marker. Dialog box comes up. My edit's already flashing. So I can go marker number two, and then dialog OK. And same thing. I'm going to go over here and do a third one right here. I'm going to do M1 and marker. Dialog comes up. I'm going to do F3, which is the number 3. And I'm going to do dialog OK. And I'm going to do one more marker and I'm going to put it right here. And M1 and marker. I'm going to do this one F4, which is the number 4. And then dialog OK. So now all my markers are set. Now that's pretty tedious, there may be a better way to do that, um, but that's what I've found in the, in the help files on how to create markers. If you guys know of a better way or an easier way to utilize the control, control surface to create markers, let me know. But that's not the real functionality I wanted to show you for the markers. I think that a lot of people will just use their keyboard and name their markers, and I probably will myself. However, after the markers are already made, there's pretty cool functionality you can use. And that is, is to jump into marker mode when you're editing a song, right? So my markers are already there. So if I just press, well, I'm going to turn edit off first, right? And get my uh, function keys back to normal operation. But now if I just press the marker button, now my fast forward and rewind buttons, and let me move down there. You see my marker button's lit. So now my fast forward and rewind buttons will take me to the nearest marker. So there's marker three, there's marker two, there's marker one. So when you're editing a song, it'd be a really quick and easy way to jump back and forth from your markers that you've set. Um, so that's why I wanted to show you that feature. It's, it's actually really cool. So the next thing I'm going to want to show you, and this is probably going to be the last thing for this video um, for uh, part two in this series, and we'll move on to part three after this, but, and that, that is to show you how to set loops up um, with just using the controller. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to go over here to where it says loop on or off. That's this button right here, and I'm going to turn looping on. So now looping is on. There's already a loop there, but I don't want to use those loop points. So how do I set my own loop points? Um, so it's pretty easy. Um, you move the now time with your jog wheel to where you want the loop to, uh, the loop to start at. All right. So I'm going to start it right here where addictive drums comes in. So now I have my lot, uh, now time there. Um, I want to press the loop button, not the loop on off button. See, you've got one that's loop on off, and then you've got one that's just loop. So now if I press loop, it turns green as well, right? Um, now I want to hold down the M1 button, and if I want it to set it as the start time of the loop, I press the rewind button. If I want it to be the end time of the loop, I press the fast forward button. So I hold down M1 and press the rewind button and that's where the loop's gonna start. Now notice it kept the end time because I haven't changed that yet. I'm gonna do that now. So I'm gonna move my jog wheel up to, uh, let's say 31 here. I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna hit M1, hold it down and press the fast forward button now. Now my loop is set. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, pretty straightforward. So I think that's going to cover what we're going to do today. And again, let me, let me just go even a step further than that. Say, oh yeah, I like where the loop started at. 
but I really want it to end way out here. Um, you want to do the M1 button again and the fast forward button again and bam, there's my longer loop. Alright, so that's going to be it for this um, part two of this video series. Um, we'll jump into even deeper um, functionality on the next part. We'll do uh, a little bit on punching in and punching out. Um, we'll look at um, I'm thinking I'm going to go into the channel controls and how to control things inside Pro Channel with the uh, the pots at the top of the of the controller with these pots over here. So I'm going to look at how I can use these to set my EQs and things like that. So uh, again, if you like what you're seeing. Uh, you know, let me know if there's things I need to add. Let me know. Um, you know, comments are always welcome, and that's positive and negative. Uh, you know, if there's things I'm doing wrong that that you know of a better way, I'd love to know what that is. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, and until the next video, take care.